Hello all. Today we are going to be discussing job postings and customized resumes. Specifically, today's lecture will help us understand the importance of creating a customized resume, hone the ability to analyze job postings to identify important characteristics to include in the resume, and understand general but important information about the structures of resumes. As we discussed in our last lecture, the job search process itself is an important step toward creating resumes and cover letters. One aspect of the job search process that must be considered before creating any application materials are the job postings themselves. These postings are crucial to a successful job search because they allow us to create documents that are customized to a specific business. But why is the creation of customized documents important? In order to answer these questions, we must first consider the number of applicants that apply to a job posting. According to Forbes, on average, 118 people apply to the same job posting, and of those people, only 20%, or 23 people, are offered a chance to interview. The job market is extremely competitive. Therefore, we need to do everything in our power to create resumes and cover letters that stand out. One way to accomplish this is by creating customized resumes and cover letters. According to thebalancecareers.com, savvy candidates customize their resume and cover letter to help the potential employer quickly determine that they are qualified for a job opening. A well-crafted resume should immediately demonstrate an applicant's suitability for a job interview for the position with your company. Which brings us back to the importance of job postings. By analyzing job postings, we are able to identify the characteristics that companies are looking for in an employee. Once we know what the company desires in an employee, we are then able to include those specific characteristics in a customized resume. However, how do we know what characteristic a company desires? In order to answer this question, let's examine a sample job posting. Here we have an actual job posting that has been taken from one of the major job posting websites. The first step in analyzing a job posting is to examine it for unique words that indicate the type of employee that the company is looking for. Take a few seconds and read through this posting. As you read, try to identify unique words. A cursor examination of this job posting yields several descriptive terms. For instance, we see several terms such as energetic, enthusiastic, and ambitious, all of which are describing the ideal demeanor of their future employee. We also see several technical descriptors, such as education and wealth management services. These terms indicate skills that potential applicants will need to possess to be considered for the position. By finding both demeanor and technical descriptors, we will be able to identify the specific characteristics that a specific company desires in an employee and tailor our resume accordingly. Here we have a continuation of the previous job posting. Take a few seconds to read through this portion. As you read, try to identify demeanor and or technical descriptors. As you can see, we have a number of demeanor descriptors. This company is looking for a driven individual who is willing to work. It is also looking for someone who has integrity, a strong work ethic, and a desire to help others. The majority of this portion of the job posting, however, is dedicated to technical descriptors. The company wants an individual with a four-year college degree, state life and health licenses, FINRA Series 7 and 63 registrations, as well as the ability to communicate and develop markets. Being able to identify both demeanor and technical descriptors within job postings allow us to accentuate those characteristics in a customized resume. For instance, this company clearly desires an individual who is self-motivated. Armed with this information, we can now tailor the descriptions of our experiences to emphasize self-motivation. 
Similarly, if we have any of the necessary licenses, we can create a separate licenses section within the resume and include them because we know that these licenses are important to the company because of this job posting. Overall, by analyzing the job posting and tailoring our resume to respond to the characteristics that the company desires, we can differentiate ourselves from the other 118 applicants who may be applying for the same job. Now that we have discussed how to analyze job postings for the characteristics that a company desires in an employee, we should practice these skills. Please pause the video, find three job postings, and analyze them for both demeanor and technical descriptors. Once you have completed this exercise, please resume the video and we will discuss some general information about resumes. Before we begin writing our resume, we need to decide which type of resume we are going to create. There are two general types of resumes, a functional resume and a chronological resume. Within a functional resume, you will create categories that align with the characteristics that the employer has indicated are important within the job posting. Here, the desired job requires administrative and managerial skills. Therefore, similar categories have been created within the resume. The candidate has then crafted bullet-pointed descriptions that describe and document the candidate's possession of administrative and managerial skills. Functional resumes are advantageous for several reasons. First, they allow a candidate to focus on the specific skills that they possess. Since you will have identified the characteristics that your potential employer desires through your analysis of the job posting, the creation of a functional resume is often easier. Functional resumes are also beneficial for people who have little or no employment history. By focusing on skills, functional resumes allow you to draw on a variety of experiences. You can create descriptions that discuss college projects or volunteer activities that you have participated in. As long as the activity describes and documents the skill indicated, functional resumes allow the experience to be included. Finally, functional resumes are better for people who have gaps in their employment history. If an individual has had multiple jobs over a short period of time, or has had long gaps between employment, it can be a red flag to employers that this individual may not be a dedicated worker. By focusing on skills instead of employment history, functional resumes do not allow employers to see these issues. It is also important to note that context matters. If you are a high school or younger college student, employers understand that you are likely focusing on your education, and gaps in your employment history are not serious. However, functional resumes do have several disadvantages. First, functional resumes are often not an option when submitting application materials. As previously mentioned, employment history is an important indicator of an employee's work ethic. Therefore, many job ads may specifically indicate that a chronological resume must be submitted. If this is indicated in the job ad, you should not submit a functional resume. The second disadvantage of a functional resume is that an HR representative may assume that you have little work experience if you submit a functional resume. Chronological resumes are the industry standard. Therefore, if we are given the option and have the necessary employment history, we should submit a chronological resume and avoid submitting a functional resume. This brings us to the second resume type chronological resumes. Within a chronological resume, instead of focusing on skills, a person's employment history is emphasized. Here you can see that this individual has been employed by four different companies from 1996 to 2007. Beneath each of these jobs, the candidate has created bulleted descriptions that describe and document what the individual did in these positions. These descriptions should emphasize the characteristics that we have identified through our analysis of the job posting. Like functional resumes, chronological resumes have several advantages and disadvantages. Chronological resumes are advantageous because they are the industry standard and because they are excellent for those with relevant work history. 
However, as we have discussed, chronological resumes can be detrimental. If the person has switched jobs frequently, has gaps in his or her employment history, or if the person does not have experience, chronological resumes will accentuate these problems and draw the employer's attention to them. Therefore, when creating a resume, it is important to consider your personal history in order to decide which resume type should be used. Once you have decided the type of resume you are going to create, you then need to decide how long the resume should be. According to a recent poll, 52% of recruiters indicated that a one-page resume was ideal for an entry-level position, while 44% indicated that candidates should have a two-page resume for a lower-level position. Once you advance in your career, however, and gain more experience, executive jobs will require even longer resumes. Regardless of the position or the candidate's experience, you should never have a resume that is shorter than one full page with one inch margins and normal sized font. Now that we have discussed how to analyze job postings to identify important characteristics, we are ready to begin creating customized resumes. In our next lecture, we will discuss the parts of a resume and how to create strong, characteristic-driven descriptions that describe and document our capabilities.